Hey guys, Cole here at Over the Mountain Cruisers. Um, I am going to start doing some more in-depth videos of work that we actually do on trucks. And so I've got a 2006 LX470 in the shop and it's got loose wheel bearings and they need to be repacked. So I'm going to show you how to take everything off, put it all back together, repack everything and yeah, get it, get it good to go. Uh, most of this stuff is probably pretty self-explanatory, but you never know. The first thing you want to do, get off this little dust cap right here. So this dust cap has a snap ring. Has a snap ring behind it that holds the axle in. So we'll get that off. And then we're going to get our snap ring pliers. Get the snap ring off. And then next you can either take the, the brake caliper off or start taking the dry flange off, which is this guy. So the dry flange um, is splined and connects basically the axle to the hub. So let's see, let's, we'll take the brake rotor or the brake caliper off real quick. So it's a 17. And sometimes it can be kind of, oops, sorry, awkward to get in here. Those bolts were alarmingly kind of loose. Just like the other side, I, I've already done the passenger side, but thought I'd go ahead and video this side. I, I like to break them loose with a breaker bar and then go in here with my Milwaukee gun. I love this thing. 3 8 inch electric ratchet. It's probably the best tool I own. Um, and then next grab your 12 mil socket and we're going to undo this bolt right here that has the soft brake line that connects it to the spindle. We're going to take that out, and then that'll give you enough room to drape your caliper back in this area. All right. Next is getting the dry flange off. So the biggest issue with these is getting the cone washers out. And so I like to undo all the bolts, or sorry, all the nuts until they're flush with the ends of the studs and just give each one a couple whacks until you can actually see the cone washer pop out. And then you can undo the nut, grab the washer, and then get a good pair of vice grips or c-channel pliers and just gently wiggle them out and that's really all there is to it a lot of people will also get a brass drift take this nut off and then just hit the stud directly with a brass drift that works also um, i do it either way so Nut and washer, pliers, we'll go back and forth. OK, 
Okay, last one. Oops, sorry, not last one. I can't count. Or C. Second to last one. And then hopefully you guys can hear the background music. I got the surround sound on, but I've got my little mic on my shirt, so I don't know if you guys can hear it or not. We got some government meal plan. All right, here's the dry flange. You can see it's uh, splined all inside, and so this is basically what connects the CV axle to the actual hub, which gives you all wheel drive. You know, so the CV axle goes into the differential. Um, but if these weren't aren't on here, um, you wouldn't get any engagement from the wheels. So, anyways, um, also check the splines of these. You can put them on the axle and check for lash, like back and forth. This one's got a smidge. I think this truck has a hundred and. 80,000 miles. There's a little bit. Um, you know, a lot of times 100 series are super, it's super common to have the park to reverse or park to drive, drive line clunk. So when you go and shift gears, you know, from a stop, you'll get, um, so you can see, look how loose, all the stuff is moving. And I'm just, so there's a, there's a 54 millimeter nut right here that you take out and then there's a lock washer like a five prong lock washer you're supposed to bend a tab over this nut this way and then over the other 54 millimeter in the nut uh, on the back part of it so i'm just bending the tab back and you can see like the whole entire both nuts are moving which is not good so these were these were super loose <clears throat> next 54 millimeter socket Literally hand tight. Again, not good. Take your nut off. Um, I clean everything when I take it off. Just makes it easier when it goes back on. And then you grab, look, I can spin this with the nut on the back. Not good. So just wiggle this guy. It'll be a little stubborn, like it where it is now. There we go. All right, so this guy is pretty worn out. It's supposed to have a little tab that sticks down right here that goes into a groove on the spindle. It's broken off, so we will be replacing that. <clears throat> Set that to the side. And then grab your 54 millimeter wrench. Again, literally, it's not even tight. So that guy comes off. Clean it real quick. Anyways, back to the music. Um, we, I, I'm a big music guy. Um, I like a lot of different genres. I love blues, southern rock. Almond Brothers is probably my favorite all-time band, but... I like to put on Pandora and just get kind of a different variety of music. You know, sometimes I'll do playlists or whatever, but I think we've got um, maybe Government Mule's Pandora station on. So hopefully you guys can pick up some of that. I don't know. It might not pick on with this um, mic. All right, so we're going to slide it off a little bit, and then there's this big washer. That goes in right before the outer wheel bearing. And this guy up. All right, and so you can see on this one, see how it's got that little tab right there that sticks down? That guy goes into the groove on the spindle and locks it in place. I'll show a better uh, close to that in just a second. All right, so pop this guy out. And 
and you want to do, I just don't want to get this on the ground, come on. Okay, we'll take it all out of the way. All right, so there's the hub assembly, inner wheel bearing. Let me go grab a paper towel and we'll clean this up and look at it real quick. <laughs> You guys can't see what I'm doing, but I'm moseying around. I'm going to turn the music up a smidge. Maybe you guys can hear it better. I'll shut up. Okay, here's the bearing. It doesn't look terrible. You want to look for like score marks on all these roller bearings. And then if you look on the inside, let's see, you want to look for wear on the inside roller just to see if it's, it's been loose for a while, just to see if it's been spinning on the actual spindle. Um, so this one, I mean, it doesn't look terrible. These are national bearings, so they've been replaced at some point. I think I told you guys this truck has 181,000 miles on it. So next, we're going to take out the inner wheel bearing, take out the seal. We'll put, replace it with a new seal. Um, and then repack the bearings, check everything in there, and then put it all back together. So I'm gonna go put this on the workbench. And then I'll bring you guys over. What's up guys? Um, this is the truck. I forgot to do a little walk around of it, but it's just a stock 06 LX 470. And then get you guys situated. Hopefully you can see that. Yeah, the, the best part of Pandora is definitely the advertisements. Okay. All right, now I'm going to grab this punch and just lightly go around the wheel bearing on the inside. You can get a seal puller and pull it from the other side, but usually this way is a little easier. Just kind of go back and forth gently. There you go. <clears throat> Wipe out the old grease. By the way, that last song, I think that was Little Feet, and then now we got some Dire Straits on, so pretty good. Pretty good playlist so far. We'll get some more paper towels. You guys can just hang out. Don't go anywhere.
Okay, then we'll go ahead and put this inner bearing in the good old, where is it? Grease packer. We'll grab some extra grease, we'll lather it up, and then try not to get grease on the rotor, but that's fine. Slap the repack bearing back in. And then put the seal back on. And just tap it, go around and tap it in place until it's flush. Grab the outer bearing. Already cleaned this guy off, put it in the Bearing packer. It's kind of easier to do it on the ground, just to get better leverage. Make sure it gets everywhere. All right, drop her in, and it's good to go back on. So take this over, and then I'll come grab the camera. All right, slide everything over. Make sure it's seated in the back. Um, and I just, I had already had the inner wheel bearing in here, so I just kind of shoved it all in as one. And then we will put this guy back in. The groove is right here, and so you're gonna clock it at the three o'clock position. Put her in there, then we're going to grab a four millimeter nut. And I'm just going to do this finger tight. You want to spin it so the one, the grease kind of gets around in there, but then also so it's actually sitting flush. Make sure it's sitting flush. And then I'll just go like an eighth of a turn. Spin it a couple times both ways. And so there's, you know, you can probably read on Mudder somewhere about 20 different ways to properly set wheel bearing preload. Um, I always do it by feel just because I've done them a lot. But... Um, let me grab another paper towel. What I usually do, go finger tight, 
then put the wrench on it go like an eighth to a quarter turn spin it around a few times and then back it off so I'm gonna go ahead and back it off right now again and then just spin it and go back to kind of hand tight and that feels that feels pretty loose so finger tight and then go like an eighth a turn quarter turn that feels a lot better you want some resistance but you know check the play laterally make sure it doesn't move and then I need to track down a new lock washer sorry you guys are having to do this all live I haven't gotten into editing videos and all that good stuff so you'll have to bear with me while I dig found one All right, the lock ring, you can see the little tab right there that was missing on the other one. So we'll put that at the three o'clock position, get the other 54 millimeter nut. Always hand thread these on here. You do not want to strip this nut or the spindle. If you do, then you will be having a bad day. make sure it's tight and so this one I believe calls for like 45 foot-pounds so you just want to make sure it's on there and then make sure it's on there good and snug all right Now the next thing you want to do is these tabs. You're going to bend one over towards the back on the back of the nut. And so you have to go around and look and see which tab is sitting flush on that back nut. So this one is down here. So I'm going to bend it back over the back 54 millimeter nut, make sure it's flush on the back. Then I'm going to do the same thing with this forward nut. So I'm going to find a tab that is flush on this side. And this one is. So I'm going to bend this one towards me coming out so you lock in both the front and back 54 millimeter nuts. I just can be fine. And after that, Put in this dry flange and then that's it. Appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully that was useful.